Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. This fountain pen resurrection video was a very long time in coming. In fact, it predates this series of resurrection videos by a full year. This is the Schaefer Triumph Crest Tuckaway from 1947. And this pen has quite a history. Sometimes the personal history of a pen is more important than the pen itself. This fountain pen was given to Mrs. Charlotte Gorbett by her husband, Frank Gorbett, around the time Charlotte began her teaching career as a grade school teacher in Welland, Ontario, Canada. You see, Mrs. Gorbett was my wife Wynne's fourth grade teacher, lifelong mentor and friend. And that friendship lasted nearly 60 years. Before Charlotte passed away at the age of 105 last year, she gave Wynne this fountain pen as a reminder of their lifelong friendship and love for each other. Wynne and I were honored to be included in Charlotte's large family celebration of her 105th birthday last year. And when we returned with this wonderful keepsake of an incredible woman's inspiring life, I wanted to get the pen restored to working order so Wynne could use it every day in memory of her lifelong friend. Of course, I turned to Jack Hernandez and his amazing skills at restoration. Here we are one full year later, and let's look at this incredible fountain pen right now. Today's fountain pen resurrection is this 1947 Schaefer Triumph Crest Tuckaway. What I'm going to do today is let you know a little bit about the personal story of this pen and this pen's owner, Charlotte Gorbett, and then give you some history of this particular model of Schaefer. Then I'll go over the parts and features of this pen, do some size comparisons, provide some measurements, and then do a writing sample. And here's what the pen looked like when we brought it home from Ontario last year. Charlotte apologized for the chewed up condition of this pen, but explained she was a biter. He bites. He's a biter. And when I presented it to Jack for restoration, I asked him specifically to not try to eliminate the teeth marks in the cap and the barrel. He had to reshape the cap so it was roughly cylindrical again, but he left all of the telltale marks of its original owner that make the pen even more precious than if it were in showroom condition. Charlotte was a teacher from a very early age. She met her husband Frank while she was a public school teacher in Welland, Ontario, Canada, just after the Second World War. She said Frank gave her this pen shortly after they were married, and she used it constantly for years, writing and grading. And you can see it has had a lot of use. My wife Wynne met Charlotte when Charlotte was Wynne's grade four teacher. Charlotte was fascinated with Wynne's poetry writing abilities and learned the nine-year-old had just lost her father to cancer the previous year. Charlotte began mentoring the young girl and Frank and Charlotte became like adoptive parents to her. Charlotte and Frank watched Wynne's career as a playwright and an actress develop over the years and were at our wedding in 1987. The restoration of this pen is not just making an old broken fountain pen work again, it's providing Wynne with a constant connection to both Charlotte and Frank and all of the love those two wonderful surrogate parents shared with her over the years. So a huge thanks goes out to Jack Hernandez for the incredible restoration of this old fountain pen. And I can tell you it was a lot of work for Jack. The pen was in rough shape, not from the bite marks, but the vac filler mechanism, which was functioning slightly, needed the replacement of the bushings and the seals, and that's no easy feat. But it was the nib that was the issue. It was so old and brittle that one of the tines snapped off. Then Jack had to source another one. The problem is, these post-war Schaefer Triumph tuckaways came with such a variety of nibs that finding a replacement was a challenge. Some of these Triumph style wraparound nibs are threaded and others are not. Plus they came in a number of different physical sizes. Jack sourced a replacement nib and this is it. The original was made in Canada, but this one says made in USA. And this one is a fantastic stub. And I think those are fairly rare in themselves. It was a different size and therefore a different thread. I don't have photos and I can't even really describe what Jack went through to get a nib on this pen. He had to completely re-engineer the threading from the old nib onto the new nib. There was the cutting of the old nib 
in pieces and re-threading the new nib, a whole process that made my head spin when he explained it to me. But the results are amazing. Another man would have given up on this pen and said it was impossible. Schaefer made the Tuckaway from 1940 through 1950. People mistake the Tuckaway for being a military pen that complied with the U.S. military requirement for a pen to be unnoticeable in the pocket, which meant there is no pen bulge and there's no clip showing. Some Schaefers were compliant with those regulations, but Tuckaways were popular pocket pens for both men and women. Women could put the pen in their handbags, and men could put them in their pants pockets while dressing casually. This particular pen is a tuckaway crest with a gold-filled cap, celluloid plastic barrel, and a Triumph nib dating from 1947. Overall, the pen is small and fits in the palm of your hand. Here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan for scale. And the tuckaway when posted is slightly longer than the Metropolitan unposted. We see a bullet-shaped top finial uh, on the gold filled cap and the small clip which is actually called a clasp that can clip to the edge of a shirt or a page and can also be clasped to a necklace or a lanyard. I suspect this is what Charlotte did with this pen while she was teaching so it would always be at hand. The cap has a wavy and straight line pattern engraved into it along with many of Charlotte's teeth marks. I bet she wasn't great at keeping kids from eating their paste if she couldn't keep her gold pen out of her mouth. I glued my head to my shoulder. <laughs> the cap tapers up to a single groove, and then it says Schaefer's Made in Canada, roll stamped into the bottom. The gold filled cap transitions to the celluloid barrel, which is engraved with W.A. Schaefer Pen Co. of Canada Limited, Malton, Ontario, made in Canada. In 1947, Malton was a small town northwest of Toronto. It's now a neighborhood of Mississauga, Ontario, which is right next to Toronto and the home of the Pearson International Airport. That airport was originally named the Malton International Airport, named for the small town in which it was located. I remember walking across the tarmac at Malton International Airport to climb the stairs into a TWA Lockheed Starliner for a flight to Argentina when I was six. My dad remembered it too as I threw up on him twice, but I digress. The barrel tapers down to the blind cap, which tapers to a bullet end shape with the Schaefer Lifetime Warranty white dot inlaid at the bottom. The famous Schaefer white dots were scattered all over various tuckaways, from appearing above the clasp to the middle of the barrel and like this on the end of the blind cap. The blind cap has some gripping grooves in it and it unscrews to release the vac filler rod. The rod extends, you place the nib in the ink and press the rod down. The piston inside the barrel creates a vacuum behind it and the pressure is released at the end of the travel of the rod and ink is sucked into the barrel. The cap unscrews with two thirds of a turn to reveal a tapering groove section and the Triumph wraparound 14 karat gold conical nib and black ebonite feed. Let's get a closer look at this gorgeous Triumph nib. The Schaefer Triumph nibs were made and used by Schaefer from 1942 to 1998, and they made them in all sizes and configurations. Here is the Triumph nib on my 1950 Schaefer Valiant Touchdown Snorkel. It has a two-tone nib with the top nib portion plated in palladium to the heart-shaped breather hole. If you turn the nib down to the paper, the curved lines of the palladium plated part of the nib forms another heart shape with the edges of the nib. The conical shaped nibs were developed for strength and the ability to push through multiple carbon copies without tearing the paper. Also notice the upward swept tip, typical of Schaefer nibs and sometimes called Waverly style nibs. At first glance it looks like the nib is bent. You can see the same Waverly style on this Schaefer Targa inlaid nib from the 1970s. The nib has Schaefer's, a dash dot dash, lifetime rig us pat off made in the usa and 14k that reg us pat off means registered in us patent office this pen was designed to post and it posts deeply and securely and makes it a really nicely balanced and lightweight pen in the hand i failed to mention that the section the groove section is a semi-transparent amber color 
right now you can't see that because it's full of ink but it, it gives you an indication when it turns a little bit amber that you're getting low on ink these pens sold for $12.50 US in 1947 which is about $160 US in today's money now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the 1947 Schaefer Crest Triumph Tuckaway with a 1950s Waterman Taperite a modern Pilot E95S a 1931 Parker Duofold Jr and a 1970s Schaefer Student Pen the Schaefer Student Pen is almost identical to my very first fountain pen but mine was in powder blue now let's look at them posted and here they are posted there's no point in looking at them unposted because all these pens were designed to be written with with the cap on the end and these are all gold nibs except for the Schaefer student now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample And we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the 1947 Schaefer Triumph Crest Tuckaway and it has a 14 karat gold stub nib let's check the wetness it's decently wet and boy is this ever smooth Jack did a real great job on this one and the ink is Waterman's serenity blue and here are some close matches to this ink on inkswatch.com as to line variation well it's a stub so horizontally it makes a 0 0.2 millimeter line and vertically it makes a 0 0.7 millimeter line which makes it a western triple XF or a Japanese XF to a medium broad and again a medium broad for Japanese and for our quote And for some reverse well it's not designed for that but it makes a very very thin line and some quick writing no issues whatsoever this is a wonderful wonderful writer I can only sum up by reading something that Charlotte wrote and spoke to her family and friends on her 100th birthday if I can get through without crying she said count your garden by its flowers not by the leaves that fall count your days by golden hours don't remember clouds at all count your nights by stars not shadows count your life by smiles not tears and each year on your birthday count your age by friends not years bless you Charlotte you were and continue to be an inspiration to all of us and on behalf of Wynn and myself, we Shep Nachis that we know you. Great thanks go out to Jack Hernandez for the exquisite restoration of this most important fountain pen. Thank you for watching.